Question one, what is the limit as h approaches zero of cosine three halves pi plus h minus cosine three halves pi all over h? All right, the number one thing on this problem is you just wanna figure out, I'm gonna like write a new question for what this means. This definitely matches the formula for definition of derivative, just a few things are changed. Okay, so notice this is extremely familiar. So the second that I see that, I know that I'm going to be using the definition of derivative formula. So another way that I could write this is, um, the other question would be, what is the derivative of y equals, I'm going to look at what function, the function is just right here. So what's the derivative of y equal cosine x at x equals, notice how my x values have been replaced by 3 halves pi. So that is really the question that this problem is asking. So if you can change the formula to a question, we're all set. So now what is the derivative of y equals cosine x at x equals 3 halves pi? The derivative will be negative sine x, and then I wanna actually just plug in 3 halves pi. So I'll get negative sine 3 halves pi. And when I do that, the sine of 3 halves pi if I'm thinking about my unit circle, 3 halves pi is down there. The y value down there is negative 1. So this is going to be negative, negative 1, which turns to positive 1, which is choice A. Problem 2. At which of the five points on the graph in the figure at the right are dy dx and d squared y dx squared both negative? Okay, if dy dx is negative, that means that my graph will be decreasing. Okay? If d squared y dx squared, remember that's the second derivative, if that's negative, that means my graph will be concave down. So I pretty much need to look at the points. Point A, the graph is increasing, so that can't work. Um, point B, the graph is decreasing there and it's concave down right there. So choice B is my answer. Okay, three, the slope of the tangent line to the curve y cubed x plus y squared x squared equals six at two, one is, right? Slope of a tangent is the derivative. So I'm going to take the derivative of this equation. I do notice that two times I'm gonna to have to use the product rule. So this first one, f prime will be three y squared dy dx because whenever we take the derivative of y, we have to include dy dx, g prime will be one. And then on the second one, my f prime will be 2y dy dx, of course, and then g prime will be 2x. All right, so now I'm just gonna go down here and actually take the derivative. So using the product rule in that first part, um, 3y, f prime g is gonna be 3y squared dy dx times x, and then plus f g prime, so y cubed times one, and then plus, I'm going to use the product rule again now, so f prime, g, so 2y dy dx times g plus f times g prime, so it's going to be y squared times 2x, and then equals the derivative of 6 is 0. <clears throat> okay, now anything that does not have uh, dy dx in it, which would be this and this, I'm going to move over to the other side and leave everything else alone. One thing I am going to do when I rewrite this is I'm going to put the x over in front of the dy dx. I'm going to get 3y squared x dy dx, and then plus, I'm going to do the same thing on this one, I'll get plus 2y x squared dy dx equals negative y cubed, and then minus, um, again, I'm going to change the order of this a little bit to y squared x, I'm going to put the 2 out in front. Okay, so that's what it looks like. I Next, I'm going to factor out a dy dx, so I'll get 3y squared x plus 2y x squared, that will equal negative y cubed minus 2y squared x. I'm then going to divide, so I'll get dy dx is equal to negative y cubed minus 2y squared x all over 3y squared x plus 2y x squared. All right, from here, we just need to plug in the points given. They told us that x was 2 and y was 1. So I'm get negative 1 cubed minus 2 times 1 squared times 2 all over three times one squared times two, plus two times one times two squared. So that will give me negative one, um, let's see, minus four, and then this will give me six plus eight, so I'll get negative five over 14, which is choice C. 
Number four, let S be the region enclosed by the graphs of y equals 2x and y equals 2x squared between 0 and 1. What is the volume of the solid generated when S is revolved about the line y equals 3? So I'm going to go ahead and draw a graph. This is a non-calculator problem, but hopefully you know that y, the line y equals 2x just goes to the origin and looks something like that. And y equals 2x squared goes to the origin and it's just a parabola. Okay, so this is the... Um, region that we will be talking about. Um, we're finding the volume of the solid and we're revolving it about the line y equals 3. So the y, line y equals 3 is somewhere up there. So since I'm doing a horizontal asket, axis, I will use the disc or washer. There will be a gap there, so I will be using washer. All right, so when I use the washer method, it's going to be volume equals pi. It's going to go where they intersect to where they intersect. And if you are not sure, this just says we're going to 0 to 1, so we'll just go from 0 to 1. And then um, we're going to do, remember, the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared. The outer radius, if I'm looking at this, if I draw my vertical line, the dot or the equation that's furthest away from the axis is the curve. So it's going to be 2x squared. And then since we're revolving it about the line y equals 3, we do need to move it down 3 units and then minus the inner radius squared, the curve that's closer to the axis, is 2x, and again, we have to move that one down 3. All right, you'll notice um, for sure, nope, nope, nope. Um, it's going to be one of these two. Um, the biggest thing that I need to look at on this one um, is you'll notice they have their three first and I have my three second. Um, I've just taught you a little bit different way than the AP writers like to watch do their problems. Um, I will tell you that 2x squared minus 3 squared and 3 minus 2x squared are the exact same thing. When you work them out and foil them out, you'll get the exact same answer. So if I'm comparing which one that should be, they, the 2x squared comes first. Um, if I'm looking at my curves, so choice A needs to be the one that I pick. All right, number five, which of the following statements about the function given f of x by f of x equals x to the fourth minus 2x cubed is true? Okay, I notice that they're talking about relative extrema and they're talking about points of inflection. So I know I need an f prime chart and an f double prime chart. So f prime will be 4x cubed minus 6x squared. I'm going to set that equal to zero. And I'm going to factor out a 2x squared if I do that, I'll get 2x minus 3, and then my critical numbers are going to be x equals 0 and x equals 3 halves. So I'm going to make myself an f prime chart, 0 and 3 halves. If I pick any, like if I pick negative 1, I will get a negative answer, I do believe. If I pick 1, I will still get a negative answer, and if I pick something like 4, I will get a positive answer. So you'll notice on this one, there is 1 relative extrema because 0 is not a relative extrema because f prime does not change signs. Okay, so now do f double prime. That will equal 12x squared minus 12x. Again, I'm going to set that equal to 0. And then I'm going to factor out a 12x. I'll get x minus 1. So my critical numbers are 0 and 1. So I'm going to do an f double prime chart. I'll put 0 and 1 on it. If I pick a negative number and put it in there, I will get a positive answer. If I pick, let's say I pick one half, I will get a negative answer. And if I pick two, I will get a positive answer. So since F double prime changes signs in two places, there are two points of inflection. So I'm going to look for which choice tells me that there are two points of inflection and one relative extrema. And I believe that is choice C. Problem six, if F of X equals sine squared of three minus X, then F prime of zero is equal to what? Basically, we just need to take the derivative. Um, biggest thing on this one is we need to rewrite this problem. So this really means sine of 3 minus x quantity squared. And since I've got parentheses here to a squared power, I'm going to change this to a u problem. So when I take the derivative, the derivative of u squared is 2u du. So I'm going to get 2. The u was sine of 3 minus x. The du is going to be the derivative of this, and we know that the derivative of sine is cosine of 3 minus x, but we've kind of got one little extra thing going on in this problem. Um, we've got an extra set of parentheses, so we've got some extra chocolate going on there, so we do need to take the derivative of that as well. The derivative of 3 minus x is negative 1. So if you'll look at my books, and now we need to find the derivative at 0. So if I plug 0 in for all my x's, I'm going to get um, 
sine of 3, cosine 3. So if I look at which choice that is, it is choice, whoops, did circle right, it is choice B. All right, 7. Which of the following is the solution to the differential equation where y of 2 equals negative 2? Okay, it's asking me to solve a differential equation. Hopefully you're loudly screaming in your head that we want to cross multiply. So I have dy dx is equal to 4x over y, cross multiply. I'm going to get y dy equals 4x dx. My variables are separated, so I'm going to go ahead and take the integral both sides, or antiderivative. I'll get 1 half y squared equals um, 2x squared plus c. Do not forget your plus c. At this point, I'm going to multiply everything by a 2, so I'm going to get y squared equals 4x squared plus c. Now before I finish solving this, I am going to find c, and they told me that y of 2 is equal to negative 2, so this is my x and this is my y. So negative 2 squared is equal to 4 times 2 squared plus c. So I'm going to get 4 equals 16 plus c, which means c must equal negative 12. So now I have y squared equals 4x squared minus 12. To get rid of a square, we square root both sides. So I'm going to get y equals plus or minus the square root of 4x squared minus 12. And then from there, we know that we need to get a negative answer. So I'm going to use the negative square root. So y equals negative square root 4x squared minus 12. And that matches choice C. Right, number eight, what is the average rate of change of the function given by f of x equals x to the fourth minus 5x on the closed interval 0 to 3? All right, I have two different methods, and I'm going to show you both, both of them depending on the method you thought about. Okay, first of all, I know that an average rate of change is a slope. So I basically just need to find the slope between two points. So I'm going to do it 0 and 3. If I plug 0 into the original, I will get 0. If I plug 3 into the original, I am going to get 66. So then I basically just need to find the slope. 66 minus 0 over 3 minus 0 gives me 66 over 3, which is 22. Right, so that's the first method. Another method you might be thinking of, the second, thing, see, the second you see the word average, we usually think of, oh, let's use the average value formula. So that would be 1 over b minus a times the integral from 0 to 3, but then we have to think it's the average what? It's the average rate of change. This is f, so the rate of change of f would be f prime. Okay, so from here, um, this is going to be 1 third. If I take the integral of f prime, that will just leave me with f, and I'd have to do f of 3 minus f of 0, because we do have to calculate it at its endpoints, because remember, this is how we usually write it. And so from here, um, f of 3, if I plugged 3 into the f function, I'd get 66. If I plug 0 in, I'd get 0. 1 third times 66 is 22. So my answer is C. Notice it doesn't matter which way you thought about it. They both give you the right answer.